Ade Fajemesin and Donato Maragno, both of the University of Amsterdam. Ade is a postdoc, Donato is a PhD student. Welcome to the Data Exchange Podcast. Thank you, Ben. Thank you. And uh, the theme of today is uh, machine learning for optimization. Most of our listeners are aware that uh, optimization, of course, is central in machine learning. Anytime you train a machine learning model, people who do a lot of deep learning are familiar, for example, with the uh, uh, gradient descent and so on and so forth. Uh, but less well known is the use of machine learning for optimization, so the reverse. And uh, probably many of our listeners are aware that there's a lot of problems in business that are best framed as optimization problems. So supply chain, staffing, um, logistics, and so on. So my first question to you, and I'll start with Ade here. Ade can take the first stop, is uh, why did you study this particular problem? So why, why focus on ML for optimization? So for me, it started um, because I was working on a practical problem uh, during my PhD, uh, forest harvesting problem. And because of the way the problem was set up, um, it wasn't easy to maybe use a, an exact algorithm to solve the problem. So we had to, and we had to take into account the company's um, restrictions as well. Um, regarding some of the software they use. So we had to um, use machine learning to help solve the optimization problem. So Donato? Yeah, yeah so if I can add something, I mean, we have machine learning for optimization in many different ways. I mean, probably the first one that comes in my mind is like how to, uh, in, in, is the optimization part how to actually be uh, faster in the optimization uh, um, in, in solving optimization models so as you correctly said optimization is everywhere but some problems are so difficult to solve that we it might require actually days and so it's really infeasible to do it so one way to use machine learning is to learn how to optimize and how to solve a problem now the way we do actually is slightly different we don't facilitate the, 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 the optimization part, but we try to come up with an optimization model which is partially learned from data. So what we use is something called constraint learning. So you, uh, so how, how did you, of all the problems to choose from, so why did you end up here? We end up here because there are so many real problems that uh, require constraint learning. And uh, the one we were using was about the delivery of uh, food for needy countries. So the idea there is uh, we have to solve an optimization problem, a huge optimization problem, where we have to find what's the right food basket, how can we deliver the food basket. So it takes into account the network and uh, all the logistics behind it. And now there is this tiny constraint, which is about the palatability of the food basket, how actually people enjoy the food they receive. And are they really able to uh, cook it and make something that is enjoyable and palatable? So that's something that cannot be written with an explicit formulation. So there is no real, real uh, formulation that we can use for it. So what we did is we used like uh, data, for example, questionnaires. We asked people, what do you think about this uh, food basket? What about these other food baskets? So then we train a machine learning model and then we could use that function into the optimization. So at the end, the optimal food basket that we have is also palatable, or at least that's the hope. So Ade, uh, um, when you try to explain to someone who's not familiar with uh, this class of problems, uh, why? Why use ML for optimization? So uh, Donato has hinted on a few things there, but uh, so let me rattle off my whys and then you, you, you can agree or disagree, right? So the first one would be, as Donato said, maybe sometimes it's hard to formulate uh, the right set of optimization equations and con constraints, right? Secondly, yeah. uh, even if you can, maybe it's just, uh, uh, maybe you, if you're gonna use classic optimization techniques, you're, you'll end up in a toy situation. 
because yeah. uh, because uh, that's the only thing that's feasible, right? And uh, and then so what else be, beyond those two? And then by the way, you can elaborate on those two as well if you want. Yeah, I think I think machine learning is just a very useful tool, and I think we are at the point now where everybody collects or almost everybody collects data on everything. Um, and if you if you have data and you have a useful tool, um, why not put the two together and use that to maybe improve your optimization process? So, so there's the like uh, so there's the aspect of you can tackle realistic problems. Yes, and then yes, and then there's the aspect of um, uh, speed. Yes, right. So, uh, Donato, do you have anything else to add there? Yeah, uh, maybe just uh, something else that we can also talk about this at the end of the talk, like um, as a future research. But I see it also uh, important machine learning in terms of uh, how easy is the modeling part. So optimization, as you correctly said, is really uh, it's a core point in many business. But writing an optimization model might be really difficult and require expertise that uh, it's not something that you learn in, uh, in one year or so. So you need experts and it takes time. Now imagine that you have data and then you can learn part of the optimization model. You don't need someone that is writing the model in a mathematical form, but you are using a machine learning model. And now there are so many real expertise, ex experts in machine learning that can use their expertise to enter a different field, which is optimization. So we are really trying to combine two different worlds that are interacting each other since many years now, but now it's actually in a different way. So it's more like machine learning for optimization, not optimization for machine learning. So uh, listeners to this podcast are familiar with tools for machine learning. So uh, before we dig in dip deeper into ML for optimization, so what is the state of tools for optimization? So if I were in a company, and I have yes. this massive nonlinear optimization problem. What am I using? What uh, I mean, people. I mean, at the most basic level, people are familiar, for example, with solvers for in Excel, right? So yeah. beyond that, so what are people using? In uh, in uh, I in think I think the the big ones to mention are things like Cplex from IBM and the Gurobi. Um, these are like really powerful solvers, lots of different algorithms for lots of different types of optimization problems. You and, also uh, have- are they, who's, who's, the, uh, who's the user of these tools? Do they have to be technical or are they, do they have like a graphical user interface so a non-technical user can use them? Oh yeah, so Cplex, Gurobi, those will be fairly technical tools. Um, I think AIMS uh, have uh, like a, a GUI built on top of the, the back end where slight non-technical users can um, optimize their problems. So Donato, anything to add there? No, I, I definitely agree. I mean, you need some prior knowledge uh, before using Gurobi or Cplex. You need to know what you're modeling. And first of all, you have to write the model, which is, in my opinion, the most difficult part because then coding it, it's it's uh, it's like, yeah, it's relatively easy compared to writing the model down. Because it seems like this is an area where uh, if you had tools for people who, are, who have the domain expertise, um, yeah. then they can, they can formulate the problem better probably than the, than the uh, technical person. But then it sounds like the tools are not really aimed for the domain experts uh, at this point. All right. So... Yes. Yeah. So she... Okay. If I can, if I can just reply, there is work being done. Um, like people are actually trying to discuss how to simplify model creation using machine learning, using the input of the domain experts as well as machine learning to learn the the optimization model. So you wouldn't need to have the background knowledge of how to properly formulate the optimization problem. And by the way, uh, 
uh, part of my motivation of having you folks here is to inspire listeners out there who might have a startup itch to scratch, right? So there might be startups in this area as well. So ML for optimization, we talked about why. So now let's talk about what. So what specific techniques in ML uh, appear to be useful? Uh, so what are people using in terms of ML for optimization? So is it deep I think learning? It depends on. Yeah, yeah. I think it 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 depends on specifically what you mean by ML for optimization. I think for what we're doing, constraint learning. Um, a lot of different uh, different ML techniques are being used and are useful. Uh, so there are definitely people who use neural networks to learn some of the constraints. Um, random forests, decision trees. So are they, uh, um, before, before you go deeper, so at a high level, describe to our audience constraint optimization. Okay, so generally the optimization problem has the objective function, which yep. can be like a cost function, which you want to maybe minimize. In addition to minimizing the cost function, you have constraints. So these constraints are the rules that you have to follow while you are trying to uh, minimize your cost function. And uh, the constraints generally shape the problem. And sometimes it is difficult to explicitly write down these constraints, like Donato gave the palatability example. Um, so in that case, you can learn these constraints from data. So, so uh, Donato, so what, uh, anything to add in terms of uh, specific ML techniques that seem useful? So in, I've seen really uh, any type of machine learning model, like from the, the, the easiest one, like uh, logistic regression, linear uh, regression to the most sophisticated ones, like neural networks, deep neural networks and, um, and, the, the nice part here is that the machine learning model, even though it's really performing well in the training and predicting part, might be not performing well into the optimization once it's into the optimization model. And so here, it's not only a matter of how good the predictive model is performing in terms of prediction, but how actually it's performing once we are optimizing so do we really trust the predictive model once and is part of the optimization? So I think this is also a key point. So the, the main reason I got interested in this area, by the way, is uh, I don't know how, how familiar you folks are with this is uh, uh, I started noticing the role of reinforcement learning in, in some of these uh, problems. So, uh, there have been some uh, efforts and even some startups where they take uh, reinforcement learning and then they plug it into the simulation software, backend of simulation software. So it turns out that uh, there are well-established simulation software that companies use, but then the, the uh, problem there is that uh, the types of simulations you can handle uh, seems uh, limited. So the idea is with uh, re deep reinforcement learning, especially if you can scale out with a library like RLlib from Ray, uh, you can tackle a lot more complex problems. Um, so one of the things then that is a uh, challenge, so, so it turns out that these simulations software, Many of them actually, the front end looks almost like a computer game, right? So where someone is setting up the simulation, right? So here's my factory. And then they have like a, uh, they might even have a, a front end interface where a domain expert can do that. And then, and then in the back end, then if you have a library like RLlib that can scale out across a cluster, then you can tackle really complex uh, simulations much more than you were able to do before. Uh, but then as many people point out, the problem is sometimes just coming up with this kind of the equivalent of a digital twin, right? So, uh, so if, if you, if you, uh, 
if you can come up with a digital twin that's so realistic that can mimic the physics of your problem, then you might as well solve your problem. <laughs> So, so have you folks been following this kind of uh, intersection of reinforcement learning with optimization simulation? I haven't really. Um, I saw the example with the sailboats. Um, yeah, yeah, that was really uh, that following. was an impressive thing. So, so they invested a lot. Uh, so this is Quantum Black from McKinsey. So they invested a lot in uh, building the simulator. Uh, and then once they had the simulator, I mean, it was still a lot of work to formulate it. So it turns out a lot, a lot of the work is, is just formulating the problem in terms of reinforcement learning. And then uh, once they were able to do that with a lot of work, then uh, yeah, they were able to uh, uh, run reinforcement learning uh, against the simulator. So. But I have seen reinforcement learning used in, used in optimization sometimes, but I think we should really make a difference between constraint learning, which is I know what's the optimization model partially, and then I learn right. part of the constraints, the objective function, but then the optimization itself is not difficult. I mean, solving the problem is not right. difficult. Now, another thing is like uh, using reinforcement learning to tease the solving part, so to make it faster. So the way I've seen reinforcement learning, for example, is to solve combinatorial optimization, where, for example, we have problems, well-defined problems. So we, have, we can define all the constraints in the objective function, but then solving that problem might take days, for example. So, so then, that uh, case, before, before you go further, give us an example of, uh, of a problem that, uh, that fits into this. Uh... Probably the easiest example for audience to understand is the traveling salesman problem. So this problem is a super famous one. We have uh, some cities, for example, that we want to visit and we want to visit exactly once. So we have to visit all of them and then come back to the regional city. That's the problem. What's the shortest path? Now, this problem can be easily formulated in mathematical expressions, but then solving it when we have a uh, thousand of cities is really extremely difficult. So a way to do it, and that's actually a new way to do it, is using reinforcement learning. So we give, we can do it in different ways. So one way is to optimize in a faster way. Another way is to actually get a solution from a deep learning model directly, instead of solving an optimization model. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. By the way, there's also been some uh, uh, justifiable pushback against this whole uh, notion of learning everything from scratch, right? Because the idea is if you have domain knowledge, uh, yes. you should combine it with RL instead of having to learn everything from scratch. So, so, so robotics people have kind of uh, uh, been uh, uh, the ones especially talking about this. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the state. So first let's talk about it from the on the research side, right? So uh, is this a big community of people working on ML for optimization and who are they? So like, uh, what's their profile? Are they ML people or are they optimization people? It, um, so is it a big community? It, I don't, I, well, I don't know how you define big, but it's, it's definitely growing. Yeah, yeah. I um, mean, are there, I mean, uh, the past few years. one way to define it is one number of papers. Two is are the conferences putting on workshops and tracks and you know that kind of thing. I, would, I think it's I now see. more or less two years, uh, two three years that it's uh, starting talking about constraint learning, machine yeah. learning for optimization. So mm. it has really been growing, and I think the. The people mostly pushing it feel like uh, the optimization experts who have some machine learning knowledge and have seen how useful machine learning can be. So, so then, uh, so uh, in terms of, uh, you said it's growing. So you yourself are seeing more papers, probably. Yes. Uh, yeah. What about on the conference side? So the conference side, uh, well, yeah, also on the conference side. So the Euro optimization conference, the big Euro conference that happens, um, they have started 
I mean, the past few years, I've had a few tracks with machine learning and optimization, but this year there have been more and more tracks for the combination of those two fields. Um, and I uh, think specifically I... in uh, European Journal of Operational Research, uh, papers like that, you see more and more papers where they combine machine learning with traditional yeah. OR. And, and then informs, right? So. Yeah. Yeah, 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 but yeah. not only from an optimization point of view, there are also like uh, machine learning conferences like AAAI. They, they, they have, for example, this year they had a workshop specifically on uh, machine learning for optimization. So let me, let me ask you folks this. So uh, take, take, a, take, these, take two fields, right? So computer vision and NLP. 10 years ago, they were basically just computer vision and NLP. Now they're dominated by deep learning people, right? So if you're, if you're a professor who came of age before deep learning, that's a very different uh, type of uh, body of knowledge compared to what is now, right? So, so are we at the point where the next generation of optimization people are going to be steeped in, in ML? In ML? Uh, what, what's your prediction there? So, I don't okay, think we'll but, be, but yeah, yeah go say, ahead, go ahead. I don't think it will be the case. I mean, we said that we need optimi optimization experts. We still need them, but now the problem is that there are only optimization experts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, but that, this is my question, uh, Donato. So, if, if you look ten years from now, a typical yeah. optimization professor will probably be also quite uh, knowledgeable in ML. No. Yes. Yeah. And uh, I think maybe the transition could... will happen faster. What do you think? Yeah. Uh, Which yeah. is good for Ade because he's on the job market right now. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't think it will be completely dominated. I think with optimization, there are people, so there is a fair amount of mathematics involved yeah. and there are people who like the pure mathematical like exact Steve, like solution Boyd. approach. Yes, yeah, so they like that exact solution approach. So I don't think um, that will ever go away. I think where wherever um, the two can fit, um, maybe. But there, so there, does optimization have uh, the equivalent of benchmarks like uh, ImageNet? So. Is, will there be an image net for uh, image net moment for uh, optimization? I mean, Where, there are optimization benchmarks um, as well. Um, where it's just the pure optimization problems, uh, test problems where you can test your algorithms on, see how well they perform compared to other yeah, approaches. and, and, and uh, Ade, well, imagine a scenario where ML people start dominating that benchmark. Yeah. Um, is that possible? Is it possible? I don't. I don't know. I I would just guess and say no. I think um, there is a lot of expertise needed. Uh, there, there is a lot of expertise with solving optimization problems. And I think not, not all tools, not all LML tools will be able to solve all optimization problems. So, but so. What, if, what, what if you start running into benchmarks where classic tools, as Donato alluded to, are... Yeah either too slow or too tedious or too compu computationally infeasible. So the entries to this uh, new imagined benchmark start uh, being uh, dominated by ML related approaches. I think, I think in those cases, you will see machine learning being used to aid the solution of yeah. the problems, like in, in, the, in the solvers. Yeah, this, um, this, already to, yeah. this is already yeah. happening. So. But I don't see like uh, a complete uh, takeover. Um, <laughs> yes, I don't see it. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, I hope you know, so. <laughs> you know, like uh, like in uh, I think in computer vision now, it's basically all deep learning, right? So, yeah. Yeah. So, but uh, so uh, let's close with tools. So we talk a lot about uh, techniques and even papers and research. So what in what's the reality in terms of tools for people who want to start trying some of the things we talked about? So new tools are coming out actually now. We also created a tool which is called Optical Optimization uh, with Constraint Learning. And what we do with Optical is uh, the use, we are combining first of all, uh, optimization again with machine learning. The optimization part is done in Payomo, which is uh, a Python software package for formulating optimization models. And then the machine learning part is performed in scikit-learn. So what we do with this package is we, uh, we ask to the user to define the optimization model when is possible. So all the known constraints and objective function, and then the user can actually give an input data set and learn the remaining constraints. So this is one of the tools out, uh, out in the market. I mean, this is an open source uh, tool and there are many, many that are coming then, out uh, right now. So, so the workflow then, uh, Donato, is once you learn this constraints, then you pass it on to a classic Correct. optimization. Yeah, there is actually a framework. You, you First of all, you define your optimization model in all those constraints that you already know. And then you learn the ones that you don't know, and then at the end, combine all together. And the package is helping you to transform a machine learning model into constraints. So then uh, what we need to do is take, uh, take these uh, packages and uh, put Ray on the back end, and then we can scale it on a cluster. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so are there any, anything to add as far as tools? As far as tools, um, I would say, the, the, the big optimization tools that are known, things like Cplex and Gurobi, FICO Express, they also are starting to, at least in the back end, in the solution part of the problem, they are starting to implement more and more machine learning algorithms in there. Which, um, I, think, which I think should be the case, which is basically, uh... Uh, the user should not have to worry that ML is happening in the back end, right? Yeah. 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 What about so the, uh, the, the classic uh, uh, AI research outfits? You know, here well, I'm talking about Google Brain, Facebook, Microsoft, DeepMind, OpenAI. Any tools coming out from any of these outfits? I have not seen. Mm -hmm. um specifically i haven't seen um I, I think most of the tools i've seen are coming from like universities uh uh different departments um there's one from tu delft uh there's the one we've made in collaboration with mit and then there's one uh which i can't remember where it's from uh, but I think mostly universities. But we have seen many papers in constraint learning coming out, coming out from companies like IBM or Google. So they are definitely investing in to this. Yeah, it seems like this uh, this area could use the equivalent of like a TensorFlow or PyTorch kind of. Uh, uh, so listeners out there who are. Uh, interested in uh, really making a huge impact because as we started this conversation i mean optimization is everywhere right yeah. yes um it's just that uh, and i think most data scientists in industry um run into uh an optimization kind of project at some point right so sure data scientists build ml models they write uh reports and ad hoc uh uh, queries and so on and so forth, but uh, do forecasting. But I imagine optimization is also increasingly on their plate uh, in a world yeah. with in a world with increasingly more constraints as we speak. Um, but uh, so it seems like there are opportunities here for new tools and uh, potentially new startups. 
So yeah, yeah, yeah. And with that, uh, thank you, Ade and uh, Donato. Thank you. Thank you.